Uh, it is, what time is it? 6.37 p.m. on September 20th, 2020. I'm gonna take like a couple minutes, uh, grab a fresh drink, and then we're going to resume at December 16th before the Black Swan event of COVID to see how this Niner strategy is holding up. We are up $600 right now. I know it says overall P&L, it says like we're losing money. I'm, I think it's because we have uh, positions right now that have lost money. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure it out, but uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. But so far, here's the position log. We have opened one, two, three, four, five, six positions, and we've rolled two defensively, and we've closed one for a 50% profit. Uh, this is the system we're using that I've dubbed Niners. It is a nine delta, nine uh, put, nine call, strangle, at 50 days to, expire, uh, to expire, roll out at 50% profit, nine days to expire, and roll up to the 30 delta uh, on the untested side in the same cycle when the break even has been breached. Uh, you can see my notes here. Let's see if I copy and paste them and put it into the, I guess, links. I don't know where else I would put it. Uh, so let's see how this copies and pastes. Yep, there we go. There's the system and uh, we will resume in two minutes. All right, and if any of you uh, are uh, TOS users, the one thing we're having trouble right now with this simulation is finding what the implied volatility rank is and the front month's IV total per product. So this list right here is telling me the net change, but it doesn't get me quite, because we would like to sell the products with the highest volatility, and we just aren't able to find that right now. So if anyone has an idea on what that is, uh, please let me know in chat. Otherwise, we're going to uh, continue. Okay, uh, so IWM SPY uh, are very close to uh, taking off of profitability. Now, EWW, let's look at that. It's at 45.5. We are still safe. We have enough premium where the break even hasn't been breached. I know it says minus 500%. That looks really bad, but we're actually not down that much. Uh, we're down 390 on the position. Uh, so. That's the total one, but remember these things bounce back quickly. Uh, finally, E M is what delta is it at? Forty. So it's about to be tested. I don't know yet. I wonder if there's a delta per position. Let's see. Oh, maybe I could do the implied volatility here. That would work. Front month. Expected, yeah. Okay. To me, it just seems like it's uh, it's never happened to me, but it seems like it's just not working. So maybe restarting it. Would yeah, be if we restart it, though, the uh, things tend to go to shit pretty quickly. Oh, I don't really know how the on-demand works, so I didn't know if it. Happened. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. On-demand just. It tends to have these types of bugs. So we're gonna go back to trading at 3x speed and we're gonna go to December 17th. Red days are holidays, so remember Christmas and New Year's are not open for the market. When I was back testing this, I kept on crashing on uh, Jan 1st. I'm like, what the hell? And then I realized, oh, well, there's no market on January 1st. All right, and it looks like we do have one that's about to hit profit of 50%. So what we're going to do is create a closing order, and that's going to be GTC, and it's going to have to be at 54 cents, I believe was one half. Let's go back to make sure. The uh, 
which one are we closing? IWM. Uh, we got. What did we trade it for? One, one hundred one. So fifty one cents is what we need to hit profitability. Hit that. Is that right? Fifty seven plus forty four. That's one hundred one. Yeah. Okay, so we could just close that at fifty one or fifty two. And confirm and send. And that's a 50% profit. So we are now up to 77,000 in buying power. That means we could, we could maybe open one position. Uh, it's not gonna be a big one, but that's our second profitable trade uh, in these two weeks that we did. So we need a mid-level position. That means anywhere from say IWM again, uh, all the way down to maybe a XLE, nothing, uh, nothing cheaper than a. Let's see. Oh, XLE is at sixty at this time. So actually, we could do it. Uh, try to get something between one hundred and sixty and forty. So uh, the Franklin, your mic is off. I mean on. So why don't you tell me which one should I trade? No, you don't have to mute your mic. I was asking, uh, or if someone else, uh, someone else wants to speak, then. Or what were the choices? Uh, the choices were anything that was between uh, forty and one forty, or sorry, forty and one seventy. So anywhere from FXI all the way to IWM, and one that we don't. It has to be something that we don't have a position on. So we could go back to TLT. We can go back to IWM, or we could open something on the XLU, XLE. IWM. IWM. I like trading IWM. It's very correlated with SPY, so let's do that. Uh, the new one was going to be this one, the Februarys. So we're going to gain some February exposure. We're going to sell the 10 Delta uh, 147. And the 10 Delta call, that's going to be 175. Also, there's a good amount of IV here. We're going to get a buck of six for this. And it's going to cost us 3,800. That's fairly reasonable. That's going to take us to 73,000. I don't think that's going too deep. And that position is now open. So let's see what we have. Does anything need to be managed? EWW is. Let's see, is there a price here? Looking for basic. Uh, I want a last price. Oh, there, now we can see it. Perfect. All right, so the one I'm worried about is this one. It's 4550 but we've received 60 Yeah, we need to roll the put again. Remember how we rolled it from 39 to 42 Well, it looks like we have to roll it once more. So this one's been a little bit of a tricky one, having to roll twice. Uh, there's 31 days, so... We need to do this, create rolling. We are going to stay on the same expiration, uh, Jan 17. We need to find a put that will get us a little more money. So that's not enough. Oh, I've been rolling it wrong. I rolled it to the 10 delta last time. It needs to remember we rolled to the 30 delta. So that was an error on my part. Uh, looks like the tr this one is the... Oh, they're the equidistant. Uh, let's see where the call... Where is our call at? Our call is at 60 delta. Okay, I have no problem then making this into a straddle at the 40 delta, basically. So we're going to make this 45 put. And we're going to collect 52 cents times 3 for it. We're going to do it one cent off the natural in between the mid and the nat. Confirm send on that. We are in. So the 
EWW is now effectively a straddle at the 45. So we're going to be collecting quite a bit of Theta Decay. EWW is going to be in make or break mode for the next three weeks. So we're hoping for it to be flat. The VIX is low, so we don't want to scale into this position. Uh, let's go to the next day. SPY is flat, EWW is relatively flat as well. That's going to be good. EEM is at 44.4. It's going to need to management soon, but not today. Uh, gold is about to be taken off for profitability. It's at 43% profitability. IWM is... Oh, that's a new position, so that's not going to be there. The spiders are at 40%, so we're not taking it off quite yet. The VIX is at 12, so we don't want to scale into new positions. We have we we have 73,000 buying power that's kind of wedged between these, so we're not going to open anything. So today would be a no day. Nothing's going to happen. We're waiting for this to buffer. It takes 10, 15, I've seen it take up to a minute at times. So we'll just be patient on that. Any questions in the interim while this is loading? Looks like we have quite a good turnout. I didn't announce this in advance, yet all of you are tuning in. It means a lot to me. So many of you have really uh, changed your trading philosophy from FDs to Theta Gang. Uh, I know that while I'm not a licensed investor and this is for educational uh, and entertainment research purposes only. I'm still really proud that a lot of you have switched over and are now selling options and, profit and profiting without chasing usurious returns. So I just want to say thank you for everyone who's given their support over the past year. Uh, we're about to hit the one year anniversary of this server in two weeks. So uh, thanks to everyone for all their support over the last year. We are still pre-buffering. I have no idea what's taking that long. Maybe we'll just skip to the 20th. You know, screw it. Well, this, because right now, Thinkorswim is going a bit slow. Uh, anyone have any trading questions or just want, uh, anything that they want to brighten up? Don't feel afraid. There are no dumb questions here. Nobody here started with this knowledge. It's taken me a while to get to where I am, and I'm nowhere near like a, a Tom Sazanoff or any, or any of those guys. So I made a really stupid play on uh, Friday. Okay. Uh, can you give me some help with uh, trying to get out of it? Yeah, let's, let's look at it right now on Tasty. Uh, give me your position. 50 spy debit spread put contracts, 323 to 320 strike price. Here, one second. Let's pull it up. Uh, oh, am I hiding weeklies? What was the expiration? Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Why can't so? Did I disable weeklies on this account? Let's take a look. Uh, account settings. Where do I go for this? We're gonna f we're gonna figure this out. Just one second. Do I have to pull up Tasty Desktop in order to do this? I, I hid weeklies for myself to prevent me from getting into similar situations. Uh, anyone want to walk me through what I need to do to open up the weeklies? We're going to walk you. I don't care if this takes a couple of minutes. We're going to figure this out and get you out of this trade. Uh, trade. Uh, Maybe it's, oh, it has to be here. Okay. Show non, yes, there we go. So show all expirations. There we go. Okay, give me it. Spy, uh, what expiration? 9.30. It was a put debit spread, uh, 3.23 to 3.20 strike price. 
323 put debit spread. Yes. So it's going to look like uh, this. You sold the 320 and you bought I the 320. The I sold the 323, bought the 320. Oh, okay. So this is a, uh, isn't that a put credit spread? Wait a second. No, it was it was a debit spread. My bad. I had it wrong. That's okay. Yeah. No, no, because we teach the credit spread, so I could see how you get it reversed. Okay. So how much did you get originally for making this trade? How much did I put up to purchase the trade? You made? Oh, yeah, because it's a debit. I, I'm going to get things in reverse a lot on this one. I am not used to those uh, debit spreads. Let's write it here. $4,200. That got me 50 contracts. 4200 for 50 contracts. That means that you're getting... Uh, uh, was it 0.21, uh, uh, wait, uh, how much is that per? So 4,200 divided by 50, you, uh, it's point, 0 0.84 is the trade. Yeah, I bought it for 0 0.84 was the trade, which was the peak where SPY bottomed on Friday and it bounced back up. So I'm down 0.2% on the position. Okay, and now it would be a 0.59 debit to close right now. Okay. Yeah. How big is your account size? Um, about that that Four, whole value. It's honestly. the whole. It's the whole account, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So now, if I tell, so the practical advice is to tell you to close on Monday, no matter what it is, and eat the loss. But are you going to have FOMO of being like, well, Mr. Ivy talked me out of it and now it rebounded and I, I like could have gotten the money back? Which like which attitude are you going to be? Are you going to be FOMO? Or are you going to be like because that's going to depend because we could unwind these in different ways. Right. I was um, when I originally made it, I, was, I figured that 50 percent max loss. That's when I would back out no matter what. That was what I said to myself um, doing this. Um, but. It was kind of scary to see my account lose like 25% value. Yeah, <laughs> this is. Afternoon. Yeah, you put all your eggs in one basket. Let's do yeah. this. So, yeah, 50 contracts. Yes. Okay, how about this? So, Monday, we're going to close uh, 25 of them for a loss. Okay. Then roll the other 25 into. Let's. This is the quarterly chain. We're going to go out to the, uh, you know, and actually, I might have an interesting way of doing this. You said 50, 50 contracts. 50 contracts total, yes. Okay, close 20 of them. Then let's roll 15 of them out to the front month of, oh, we can't do a weekly. It's got to be the November. Oh, what about the oct? Yes. Okay, and these were, let me write these down because where we were at. Uh, uh, give me the trade again. It was 323 uh, and uh, 323, that you sold. 320, oh, yep. Okay. Let's do this. If we had, let's roll 15 of them to the following. The Oct 16. Now we need to get we need to get you time on this. I don't think. Uh, what the hell? Uh, so 323, 320. Swap them for the debit spread. Uh, if you roll it out, it's gonna get cost 74. You only got 84, so that's gonna yeah 59. Roll 15 of them out to the October 16 uh, expiration and roll the other 15 to the November 20th. And then that's going to even out your daily losses. You're going to eat immediately about a, you said what, 20% loss, 22%? Yes. Let's that take a look at the S&P futures to, uh, this is a put futures down. Futures are down tonight. And it's even. It's even. Matter until morning, though. Yeah, it, it doesn't. I mean, they just opened right like an hour ago or two hours ago. 
the futures. So we'll we'll find out where the market's heading in uh, a little later tonight. But here's what I would do. I would take uh, of your 50, you close 20 for a loss. You just do that at like one cent off the natural. So if you could, it, between the mid and the nat, you just take the nat, take one cent off of it. And that's going to be what you're, you're going to eat that 20% loss. 15 of them, you're rolling out to the October 26th. That's going to give you a little more time decay because on this spread, you effectively, I mean, you need SPY to be under 323 for this to work. That's going to be only, this gets you a, a higher percentage at this one, but it's going to cost you some money. Uh, but you're getting some of that money by selling 20 of them. Let's see what happens when we take it out to the... Uh, uh, the Novembers. Okay, it starts to be more reasonable at November when you're doing the 40. So here's two options. Here, here's a couple plays that you could do. One, close 20 of them at loss tomorrow regardless because you need some cash. You can't afford to lose everything off of this trade. So you're just going to have to realize somewhat of a loss. You could either push 15 of them out to the October and November expirations, or you could buy yourself some more time and do maybe uh, 10 of them on the October 16th. Uh, so no weeklies, only the monthlies. October 16th, November 20th, and Jan 15th. I'm really liking Jan because of the IV, and it kind of amortizes your loss. So I do 10, 10, and 10. Uh, does that make sense, how you do that? I understand that. I just never rolled positions past. Well, how about, how about this? Yeah. I've worked tomorrow, but on pound theta only, which you could get access through from pound bouncer or hash bouncer, uh, you could uh, post the trade there on which uh, client do you use, Robinhood or Tasty or what? Robin. Okay. So uh, po before you do, like, uh, set it to uh, roll, uh, roll there. Take a screenshot. People there will walk you through if you're doing it right because you're going to close 20 of them and then roll 10 each of those three months. And just make just post it there. The people who are good at Robinhood, they'll let you know if it looks right. I'll take a glance. I can't promise that I'll be looking at the very minute because I'll be at work. But we'll help you unwind it. You're going to eat a loss, but you don't have to lose more than half your account if we do this right. And we could still maybe recover all of your money if these other if your market assumption is correct and the market declines in the next month or two, which I believe it is. I have a negative delta on my account. Like uh, this account's going to be a little weird because right now the my WWE I had a uh, uh, a covered put on it, so right now you only see the naked uh, long option. I was talking to Tasty about how to do this. So that's why you see a theta negative position in my account. Uh, but you'll notice how if if you look at my beta weighted delta, it's negative because I'm kind of negative on it. And you look at my cash, I'm very cash heavy right now, be even with the VIX where it is, because I have a bit of a negative market assumption and I'm waiting for volatility to climb a little higher before I start going back to SPY. Anyway, I hope that helped you and don't ever put all your eggs into one basket because this is what could happen. I know that it would have been cool for you to double your money or to get 50% of your money on that trade, but we teach a rule of never bet more than 5% of your account on any single position because of this, because I believe you're right, and I believe you're probably smarter than the average person. The problem is it's difficult to beat the market from a short-term directional. It's more of a wisdom of the crowd thing. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, uh, the gumball, par I don't know if it's called the gumball paradox or something, but let's say we have a jar of gumballs and the goal is for someone to pick the closest number to how many uh, gumballs there is. The people with the highest levels of intelligence are and the, maybe the highest like vision of the group 
are not going to do better than that mean of the group because the wisdom of the crowd kind of prevails in a situation like that. So it's very easy for your intelligence to kind of betray you uh, when wisdom needs to overtake it in that we have the natural ability to put ourselves into, into scale into the worst positions at the wrong time. And uh, even people like, uh, I think, was it Peter Thiel uh, or uh, someone who was shorting Herbalife? Uh, I think it was Tim Ackman. Ackman, yeah, thank you. Ackman. Thiel is, uh, what's his uh, Thiel startup that I was, re- Palantir? Palantir. Yeah, yeah okay. So uh, sometimes I mix up names. Anyway, Ackman, I believe, is cr- absolutely correct in that Herbalife is an MLM. The problem is he's not right at the right at the right time and he's lost billions shorting it and eventually gave up so even if your market assumption is correct you just can't be right at the right time with these kinds of things and that's why i kind of preach being delta beta weighted uh, delta neutral because even the people who follow the market the most who have a sense for it cannot beat the wisdom of the crowd all right so Good luck with that. Uh, Hopefully we'll unwind that tomorrow and maybe get you a bit more diversified of a portfolio because, you know, 4,000 is nothing to sneeze at. That's a great start for any investor. And you could turn that into some serious capital by uh, making winning trades consistently and trying to chase a reasonable return. Like I try to average, I'm trying to hit 20% a year, which sounds ridiculous when you think of spy and that kind of thing. But I think it's feasible with the amount of risk that I take on, but it's calculated risk. I'm not making a YOLO every two months uh, because I'm sure it's right this time. It's I'm making hundreds and hundreds of bets uh, that are each plus advantage. I'm trying to be the casino and take all the bets and eventually I might have a bad day or two, but the tabulated receipts should turn to profit. Casinos generally don't go out of business, and I like to be the casino. Right, understood. I just I got frustrated because I started doing a lot of thinking strategies in March, ended up getting into wheeling, and I don't know why I went to AT and T for my stock to, to do that, but I've been sitting on AT and T shares for four or five months with little to show for it, just because it's not a very volatile stock. So, AT and T also has a massive dividend, which. Uh, when you are trading uh, uh, covered calls, is very difficult to account for. I mean, I recommend in any covered call position never to be uh, doing it on companies with a two percent dividend or higher because of the drag that it call that it uh, that it drags on the call side skew of the uh, trade because typically options have a put skew to it due to ever since the the 80s uh, uh, crash of the market, there's been a put skew in derivatives. So I I know it's, you probably, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's frustrating to be flat and not show profits, but you know what I like? I like not losing. And that's what Niners are about, is that I created this strategy, not because this is something I thought was the perfect strategy for me, because I like trading closer to the money. I like the 25 Delta. I really like the 50 Delta. That's why I did that video for my key. But that's just not for everybody. And I have to account for that. I've been doing this for a while. And I, ne- I, w- I didn't start doing 50 Delta. That's ridiculous. Nobody should be doing that in their first year. So I wanted to get you something that has the smooth rate of return. I mean, look how many wins in a row. We're not back testing in 2011 because if you do this trade in 2011, you're just winning all the time. I don't have much to teach you. You just do it and it would work. I want to teach you what happens here, what happens here when you're finally realizing I'm selling a naked option. If SPY drops 50%, I owe owe $15,000 if I just let it expire. We're never going to put ourselves into that position with that level of delta, but I think people would get paper hands at this point and would take a massive unrealized loss. Like I'll show you one of the versions of this trade I did. Uh, back test that I did of how this could just fail miserably. So let's uh, let's put in a 200% stop loss, not exit when uh, traded, and take this uh, where we're getting out really quickly, and we're going to begin this in 2018. 
Watch how bad this strategy fails with paper hands. Oh, you know what? Let's make it also a, uh, not the 60 day stuff. We're gonna make this a 30 day. Not, so it's not quite the weeklies that you guys are trading, but we're gonna get a little greedy and we're gonna show why uh, greedy with paper hands is gonna be an absolute killer on a strategy like this. So we'll bring this down to 14 and 30. Look at this. This is what COVID would do to paper hands. You, and you just not, you're not gonna recover from this. It's gonna take you years to climb out of this with a $4,000, $5,000 portfolio. So, I, I mean, I was stressing when I was going through the back test, realizing some of the stuff I've been telling you guys on taking undefined risk. And I'm like, well, it, it holds up, but what if they just, during one black swan, don't know how to handle it and get cold feet and then they blame it on the system well something like this would happen and that's not pretty granted you get about a thousand of it back uh by doing that but do you even have the capital uh to do it and if you're 100 percent in one stock like you were doing with the debit spreads it's game over at this point robin hood's closed your account and uh you ain't going to zaxby's anytime soon understood so, Thanks for being honest yeah. about that. Uh, let me share with you my biggest loss in trading because I don't think people should be ashamed of their losses. You should learn from them. Uh, let's pull up. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to pull it up on here. Uh, spy stock. Uh, what back testing website am I using? I'm using E Delta Pro. I have a paid subscription to that. It costs about 500 bucks a year. Uh, the reason I bought it is because I've been giving you guys uh, who are four-figure accounts advice, and I realized like, I need to uh, uh, figure out uh, how you guys can manage positions like that with the capital you do. Otherwise, you're going to like fall flat if COVID comes back next year or something like that. So I'm going to take you back to uh, 2008 or 2007. And you could see that we finally got back to 2000, 2001. Everyone is buying stocks. Uh, uh, all my coworkers are investing. And, I, and then the bottom starts to drop out of the housing market. And I look at companies. I'm like, you know what? There's no way a company like Washington Mutual is going to mm -hmm. fail because uh, the, the government's going to bail them out. Uh, and... Uh, uh, all these uh, mortgages are backed by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, so they're not going to be uh, forced to hold hand, uh, on this. So I bought preferred stock in it. Preferred stock is an interesting, inter interesting instrument. It's kind of halfway between owning bonds in a company and owning stock. And I said, well, even if the stockholders get liquidated, the preferred stock will be safe. And well, Washington Mutual, fuck, I lost everything. And it sucked because I worked my ass off. I mean, you know, anyone who watches me in theta only, they know that I'm working long on the weekend and I care about my jobs and that kind of thing. And I was about to create this startup company and I had lost a good chunk of capital that I planned on putting into it. It was like $15,000. So what I had to do was immediately my paid off car, <laughs> I had to uh, take out a loan against it. And that sucked because I owned that car, and but I needed the capital for my company. And uh, that was a harsh lesson in, even though I think I was right, the government, the government fucked up that bailout. The wrong people got bailed out, and it was corrupt which banks got to take over which banks. Like F De uh, 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 Jamie Demon, uh, 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 so, like I, I curse his name. Uh, I, I think that was a corrupt bargain that they did uh, to to bail bail out JPM and that in. Uh, I mean, he, he's gotten benefited from it all the time. So I look at it. I think I was right, but it doesn't matter if I'm right because what happened, what happened. So I'm never putting all my eggs in one basket again, and I'm making mm -hmm. sure that I've lived through now multiple crashes of the stock market. And we experienced a short-term one, and I think we have short-term memories because everyone's doing the wheel, everyone's doing PMCC, everyone's doing covered calls, and they think stock market is going to continue to go up. And it might, but the day of reckoning occurs.
and it will it will hit. And if you just sell puts and if you just buy stock, you if you lose half your money, then you may never go to the stock market again. I know my some of my peers in 2000 or 2008 stopped investing. Look how much money they lost out on. They don't have a house. They don't they haven't paid off anything. They still have um, student loans for degrees that they got before the millennium. How fucked up is that? Uh, one final thing. L trees. how would you protect your account from a black swan using that strategy? Simple. Don't use all option buying power. Have negative correlated uh, uh, products in your uh, portfolio. Scale into volatility and don't sell what you can't cover. Like we have a hundred thousand in this account, have we? Uh, we haven't dipped below seventy thousand in options buying power, and we're playing for peanuts right now because the market's giving us peanuts. We're not uh, to in order to get a weekly paycheck of a thousand bucks. We're not suddenly scaling this into five spy contracts, four TLTs, and three IWMs. We're saying, look, the returns aren't going to be that hot with a twelve VIX. We're gonna we're gonna stay small. So that's why when people say options as like a weekly paycheck or a monthly paycheck, I'm like, no, that's not what they were built for. These are financial derivatives. I know we like to call them faggy D's and that kind of thing, but uh, they were never meant to be a passive income source. You can use them to generate income over the long term, but you can't generate them. You can't generate the equivalent of a weekly paycheck out of them. What you can do is take your returns from a year, put them into a safe vehicle, something like TLT or something like that, and then withdraw from those every couple of weeks. But you shouldn't be taking withdrawals from your options account on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. You should be depositing money in. And then eventually when you want to live off of it, then start taking money out on yearly intervals rather than weekly. So, Altris, I hope that answers your question. Hey, Options Horror, uh, I'm able to hear your keyboard. I have a mechanical keyboard, too, so I'm not going to... Oh, my bad. <laughs> that's yeah, that's okay, mate. Uh, like, my, hey. my, even my neighbors complain. <laughs> hey, is there a channel to ask questions in? Uh, no, actually, there isn't, so you'll have to go to Pound Links to do it and then just okay. mention in me. But, you know, what's your question? Um, my question is, so I was talking to someone about like uh, the Black-Scholes formula and they were saying that it's not accurate on predicting option prices now and I guess they showed me some examples like it isn't, but what would you say is the wrong parts of it? Uh, Black-Scholes is the aggregation of bid-ask prices that determine what the price, that determine what the standard deviations and likelihood of events are. The problem people make when driving or uh, trying to figure out Black-Scholes is we're used to the probability being defined by the events and then the bets being made based off of the probabilities and everything in Black-Scholes is done in reverse. Uh, if you look at a correlation with VIX and market movement, there it definitely is one in terms of magnitude over the past 15, 20 years. That's why VIX has, has its use. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a valid market instrument. So what I would say is that VIX is not an indicator of the market will drop. Uh, Black Shoals, which is used to uh, construct the VIX, it takes the wisdom of the crowd when it comes to pr uh, predicting the magnitude of future volatility, and it does so with a reasonable accuracy level, but always will will always overstate it due to the natural need for hedging and that the insurance market of, F of uh, derivatives cannot be liquid unless sellers have a natural uh, advantage. There, You can't sell car insurance if you aren't making money, basically. So the... Uh, the Black Shoals, it's never meant to define what the future movement is, but it's supposed to be an indicator of what the expected movement is, which does have a correlation with magnitude of uh, an acceleration of markets. Is, is that okay? I guess so. I was more just asking, like, so black shoals as in the sense where it used to be the way that option prices were calculated and then there were some new methods that i could not figure out like how is that different from now how are option prices calculated now 
versus when they used to be. Uh, well, market makers still With use Black, black Shoals uh, predominantly, but you're right. There's been, there's been, in the past three to five years, attempts to replace Black Shoals with either AI or other methods that can be used to predict market volatility because there's the belief that the amount of uh, uninformed investors that are purchasing uh, derivatives are skewing the prices uh, chaotically without knowledge of the underlying. So basically the noise to signal is getting worse and worse every year. I would say that's a market, that's an advantage to sellers in chaos in terms of uh, overstated uh, volatility, but yes, in terms of maybe prediction accuracy, it might make Black Shoals less relevant in terms of how market makers can determine what the expected magnitude of changes are. It's a very fascinating uh, uh, topic, and I think if I was 10 years younger, my math skills would allow me to retackle it because I pretty much had a minor in math at, at uh, my university and it's based more uh, less off of like uh, physics in terms of uh, calculus related maths and more based off of combinatorics and statistics and linear algebra uh, for tr uh, because I actually did a lot of dead reckoning programming which is the way of predicting object orientation and velocity in games like first-person shooters where uh, in order to sync up net code and make it seem like it's realistic because uh, if you're not familiar, Grace Hopper is famous for saying like you can't outpace the speed of light and that's always going to be a hard stop in terms of simulation. So what she developed for the naval forces uh, was using forms of linear algebra to determine that and to predict what the likely uh, uh, movement and orientation of naval battle cruisers were, and we kind of we've kind of evolved to that when I worked with companies like ID and Unreal in how Netcode uh, predicts those kinds of things. So, and it's funny because I was talking to Carmack uh, a few a few years ago in regards to determinism versus non-determinism in systems like uh, Oculus and VR because he used to be fully in the school of deterministic replays and that's how uh, id in Quake created like those uh, uh, dot... Uh, what were those replay uh, files called? Did anyone remember? Demos. Thank you, dot demos, yeah. And uh, uh, so we have some old people here. Uh, and. Uh, it's funny because Unreal went the high school, but I remember that. Yeah, and uh, uh, Unreal went a very different way, in which they used time-based deltas for uh, their physics system, while it used frame-based. But then in Oculus, because of all the independent processors that are used, uh, everything is based off of time, and there is no way to do determinism in the Oculus system. And this Twitter person uh, went off on Carmack saying like that he was an idiot because of like something he said about determinism. And I said that like, look, if you look at a system like o Oculus with decentralized CPUs, it's just not going to be possible, and it's ridiculous to expect the. Uh, fidelity of a dot plan, uh, not dot plan, that's way back, dot demo files of deterministic replay to be able to reconstruct everything. So the what, what I'm getting at is the uh, how we look at things in five or ten years may completely blow Black Shoals away and make it a relic of the past similar to the Dow Jones and Industrial Average, where it's not really useful. Nobody uses the DG, uh, uh, the DJ any, uh, anymore. We use the S&P, or even for things like my mutual funds and retirement, I use VT, which is a, a market-weighted uh, index of the entire world, which was not even feasible in the 70s or 80s. Uh, I completely agree with that. I just want to make one point is there's been essentially an, a way to train AIs with a neural network where you can essentially just plug in financial mm -hmm. data about each of the Greeks and each of the relevant factors like volatility, stuff like that, and plug that in for historic option prices, then have an AI calculate it. And people have made millions just finding differences between that and the actual market price of those options. Yeah, the scary part is, though, you don't know why you made those millions. And we use that in ad tech in order to optimize ad campaigns and other things. But the danger is that you can't always use the hit, the, the past to, to 
predict the future. And when you're dealing with an unsolved chaos system where if you're kind of the belief that like NP is not going to equal P in this case, that it's just going to not be a solvable system and you're eventually going to blow up the entire uh, 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 the algorithms and how the AI works and it's going to come to the wrong decision, especially if it's prone to attack. Like. Uh, what happens if a foreign power is being used? It's going to intentionally sabotage the data in order to bid it up. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the flash crash a few years ago. That was uh, part. That's part of the problem with algos uh, being able to, being tested on that data of AI rather than having actual financial mechanics behind it. Is that you can't predict when a flash crash will happen. So I don't know if the world economy is willing to bet on that yet at this stage of how we understand AI and how, and how mature the field is. I bet someone's going to do it ahead of time and we're going to see some dangerous results. And someone, but I don't think we're going to solve the market. I don't think the market's solvable. Yeah, I don't think it is solvable either. I think it's definitely NP because in its, like, just the market in its, entirety has to be chaotic in nature. yeah I, so, I completely agree we're both of the same hypothesis of this and if say one person had that perfect formula then it would technically be um p but once they start using it enough it would no longer be that it's almost like if one person had the way to solve free will yeah but they can't tell anyone else it it, it destroys the uh, liquidity of the markets also if you can solve for a part of it and that it basically just uh, it takes the capital out of it. And we're, we could go academic for hours, so I'll just quickly summarize that uh, I think it's interesting. I think the, it's overstated. I think we're going to be relying on Black Shoals for the next three or four years, and uh, it's going to become less and less accurate due to the chaos of having untrained buyers in the market who are purely speculating for lottery-like returns. All right. Yep, for sure. So let's see where we're at. What's the score? How are the Seahawks doing? Let's check it out. Sorry, I live in the, the Pacific Northwest. So, Oh, all right. Seahawks are up. Good for them. Anyway, uh, so we were going to go to, oops, I hit the wrong button. I'm in my live account. There we go. Hey, when that happens. Uh, we're going to go to the weekend and see how we're doing on these positions. Uh, VIX, we need to see if it climbs above 15 because if it doesn't, we are not going to be entering new positions mm -hmm. and it's flat. So let's take a look. Uh, the... SPY at 327 call is still relatively safe. We're at 25 days. Uh, I thought we had something that we put on at 60. Where's my 60? Oh, okay, here it is, the IWM. Uh, we are getting close to being able to take off gold. And when we do, I don't think I want to replace it because this is how you get into problems. You start scaling when you shouldn't. Right now, the system is saying don't scale because you're not getting enough premium and a black sw like and a movement is going to wipe you out. If you look at the market right now 1220 compare it to where it is uh, where it was sorry let's go here. 1220 good times are ahead. It's going to be flat for a while. So yes, we're going to lose money by not scaling, but it's going to save our ass right here because there was no volatility here and we're not going to be overexposed. So let's go forward another day because gold, I want to take that off for a profit. So this is a uh, day before Christmas. Market's only going to be open for half a day and SPY is absolutely flat and gold crashed, did it? Can that be right? What was GLD yesterday? Oh no, it didn't crash. It's up one point. That's weird. Did the volatility of gold go up? Because we lost... No, we only lost 12 bucks. Okay. So it's not too bad. 
Uh, let's see if anything needs to be tested. The Remember EWW, how we turned that into a straddle? It was $45 straddle. That was a great call because look, it's at 45 and we are getting a lot of theta off of this. It's really helping recover what was a disastrous position in which now we've only lost uh, at 200 bucks. And remember we were down 400 bucks off of this originally. So this one is recovering nicely. And if you look at the back test, I wanna show you when that happens. See right here, our first loss uh, trade number 16. Let's take a look at that on SPY. So originally this is a 113, uh, is this right? Yeah, a 113, 139 straddle for 86 bucks. And suddenly it goes up to, uh, the stock cr SPY crashes to 112 and we're down 500 bucks in unrealized losses. What we do to defend against this is we roll up the call from eight to 30 and we collect 167 bucks. And because the put now is at the money and its theta decay is so high, this becomes, you, you cancel off these 500s because that's not a, uh, um, we're not rolling that one. This 167 plus this, the 64 and 23, so that's 230 minus the two, and then you subtract that, that gets us out of the trade for only 60 or $70 loss, even though it dipped, what, 18 points? That's $1,800. You think we're gonna lose our shirt, but it's about t rolling the untested side. So that is why when you look at the returns here, you notice how every time there's a big dip, because we scaled our risk and said, we're gonna take the opposite contrarian position, we gained our capital back one out of one, two out of two, three out of three, four out of four, five out of five, six out of six. It wasn't until year seven where we had our first test that we weren't able to get our money back immediately by taking uh, the position and rolling up the deltas. So that's the power of defense and why it's almost more important than taking early winners at 50% of rolling the untested side, rolling it to 30 delta on here. So, on here, let's see if there's any anything that needs to come off because of risk. This is at 44. Nope, we are safe. So we get to go past Christmas, get two days of theta decay, and go to December 26. S&P is up a buck, and that's going to be good for us because now... Let's see, GLD, it's still coming in, 142. We're still in our uh, in our profit zone. We only have 22 days left. So even though it shows a loss, theta is really starting to accelerate on this. EM is uh, has just breached the call. So we're gonna have to roll up the puts on there. Uh, let's see if there's anything that needs to come off for profit. I'm not seeing it. EEM needs to be defended. So let's go to EEM. We're gonna take off the 45, 40.5 put, and we want to roll that to the 30 delta. So, we are 40.5, there's 22 days out. Remember, we always roll to the same strike on uh, ro this defensive move. Uh, the 30 delta is going to be, oh, that's interesting. It has a, these in-between strikes. This happens sometimes. So 44 is going to be where we roll. So we're going to roll this up three and a half bucks. And we're going to get price not traded. What's wrong with this? Option isn't trading, not a valid option class. Is the strike wrong? January 17th, it hasn't expired yet. What is wrong with my trade? Well, let's delete it, let's figure it out. Uh, EM, these are the January 20s. We're rolling the put, we own, yeah, we have two of those. Create rolling, 
It's going to stay Jan 20. Oh, see how it teleports to Jan 17? That's it. Is that what's wrong? Not traded. All right, anyone got an idea on this one? I mean, worst case, we could just close it out and re-enter the position. I hate to do that, though. Create rolling. This is Jan 20, 40.5. Why is it not going? Is it because it's a quarterly? It says it's Jan 17. Oh, Jan 17. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, Jan 17 at the 44. Uh, let's go to December 27th. Maybe there was something fluky with that day. Monitor. What's the strike of it? You might be trading one that like got split down weirdly. Oh, you are, that might be it. I was trading the 40.5s. Okay. I haven't been watching much. What's the ticker? EM. It's the, uh, uh, the emerging markets. It's the Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea ETF. Okay. Let's see. EM split. Yeah, they had a split. When did they have it? I'm not sure. I just saw that they had one. Okay. Uh, I guess we could roll both of them. Actually, create clue. Option isn't trading. Weird. Okay, well, let it ride. <laughs> uh, you sure you didn't like do it for a holiday or something? Well, it, it, so it's December 27th, uh, 9, 9 a.m. The market's open. It was open on December 26th. But it's saying that this strike is no longer open, and hmm. uh, I guess we just have to let this one ride. I have no idea what to do with it. Luckily, we need well, we need to defend this. Uh, no, this one's a stri stri straddle. Mm -hmm. We're good on it. Gold is fine. This one's fine. Market pow buying power is good. VIX is low. We're just going to let it ride. That's not how I would trade it, but that's how this is going to have to play out. All right, uh, December 30th, buffering. What was the stomp? This is from Kyogen. What is the stop loss strategy on, again? I understand the roll on tested side at 30 delta if the tested side is at break even. Uh, if the tested side is breached break even would be correct. But what happens after the strangle becomes a straddle and it moves beyond your straddle? Uh, well, uh, you still roll the untested side. So uh, let's take a look at it right now. So let's say you have a. A 115, 137 strangle, and let's say it goes to 133, which would probably breach the break even, and you roll the put up to 125. So now you have 125, 137. You do that again, and let's say it becomes 137, 137, and it goes to 150. What do you do? You roll and make an inverted strangle. So the put is now going to be at 143. The call is going to be at 137. So you have a maximum six dollar, a minimum six dollar debit just to exit the trade. But it's inverted strangle uh, at 30 delta. That's how you're going to get out. In the future, if possible, it'd be cool if you did a YouTube stream so I could watch while in another Discord. Good idea. I do plan on uh, streaming it to my YouTube um, next time. All right, finally, it uh, uh, buffered. So we have GLD is at 142. We're at 18 days. We are still safe on there, safe on here, safe on SPY. Uh, 
here too. The VIX is at 14, which is good. We want that to climb to 15 so we could uh, put on another position. The EEM is at 45, which is good because, uh, I mean, I would like to close this, but it won't let me. Uh, let's take a look at 17 Jan 20. Maybe it's trading this time. I'm going to fast forward 10 minutes, see if there's any volume. Okay, we're, we're starting to see volume. So let's see if we could do it this time. Monitor, uh, create rolling order. Mayor. What was that? Yeah, they changed the uh, splits on here because see all these in-between ones? This is what happens when you get a stock split. So I think it moved us over to a different uh, a different class, and that's not working, yeah. So we're just going to let that ride. Oh, it's still pre-buffering. No, we'll skip to the 31st. Nigger, 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 nigger. Hey, Albatross, I saw you this time, so you get the permaban. Good for you. Let's see if I could find him. Here's the, here's the problem, guys. I'm not good at uh, Discord, and I'm trying to find him. If I right-click someone, see, he disappears so quickly. Anyone got an idea? Can they ping the moderators and say Albatross needs to go? Let's see, market, what's his name? Oh, perfect, thank you, Donger. I found him now. That guy's gone. Thank you guys for uh, finding his name. I'm a boomer, so I'm pretty bad at uh, being quick on this stuff. Uh, Pigeon and Donger. Thank you so much. And oh, Disconscious, you too. Oh, you've been with us for a long time, Disconscious. Thank you, by the way. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Um, I believe in free speech, but this is my server, so fuck him. Uh, let's see where we're at today. Uh, December 31st. December 31st, uh, we have... Do we have any profits? Oh, the spy is about to take profits. That's good. VIX is finally up to 15, so we're going to be able to put on a trade soon. But notice how we haven't really put it on any new trades in a week or so. It's really saved our ass. Yeah, we're getting... Uh, I haven't... What's that, Noss? I haven't hung out here that much, but are you essentially back... Like, are you just trading on, like, an algo backtesting, or what are you doing? No, I'm, I'm showing people how to, tr how to trade Niners, which is a system I developed that cool. is about uh, trading uh, consistently, uh, getting high, uh, sorry, getting consistent wins, taking undefined risk, 
and um, how would I say uh, it, it, it's not an algorithm but it is meant to uh, trade overstated volatility outside of one standard deviation at about one and a half okay and uh, the system has a few simple rules uh, here it is in the notes. It's a little tough to read, but I'll, I'll re-explain it. It's the nine delta strangle traded 50 days to expiration where you roll at 50% profit or nine days to expiration. And whenever the break even is breached, you take the untested side to 30 delta. I have been trading straddles and high delta strangles for a while, but it's just not appropriate for four digit accounts. And I wanted to come up with a system where people who have a few thousand dollars can start trading undefined risk, but do it in a way where it won't blow up their account horribly and be able to withstand black swan events. So it's not going to have the highest rate of return. I don't think you're going to be getting 20% annual off of Niners, but you will cons profit consistently and start to get your feet wet and eventually uh, get move on to the 16 Delta strangle and the 30 Delta. So that's what the system is. We're calling them Niners. Oh, look, right, finally. Thank you, man. I, I thought, thought the website that you had open was Quantopian, so I assumed it was an algo. Oh, no, no. This is eDelta Pro. It's a paid service. Uh, cost about 500 a year or 100 a month. And because so many people have been asking me questions lately in uh, Theta Only, and I realized that my experience might actually cause them to blow up their account. Like, here's an example of a type of trade that I was making that would blow up their account to an unrecoverable state. And I wanted to come up with something that if you have about five grand, you could start trading undefined risk. You will have risk and it is significant, but you won't blow up if you start at the wrong time, like in March of 2020, which you see here on a simple, uh, this is a different trade. This was a, uh, 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 someone exiting the trade at 200% and it blows up the system. Okay, a couple questions. Uh, Cloud, I gotta go, but this has been pretty interesting. Oh, thank you, that's very nice, disconscious. So when you enter a strangle position, aren't you essentially putting yourself in a naked call on the call side? Uh, yes, uh, you're putting yourself naked on both sides. Uh, so the call, the, the, the short call is what is undefined risk. A put always is defined risk because a stock cannot go beyond zero. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe Hertz will prove us wrong, but I don't think a stock can go below there. So uh, the, uh, you can't cash cover or cash secure a call, but if you use margin and sell undefined risk, and not buy those long legs that give you the insurance, you can pr take more profits and actually trade relatively small. I think people get the confusion that undefined risk is for big time players. And I think it could be for small time traders if done appropriately and you don't take 100% of your buying power and immediately start trading the 50 Delta Spy. So we're gonna go back to here and I have a little bit of a question. Could yeah, you, yeah, of course. Like, uh, make, what, what's that, Nels? Could you make it like an, an insanely wide call credit spread instead and just make sure that you have like some sort of risk where if you did lose, it would only be the maximum amount in your portfolio so that say you had Williams Petroleum, which went up by like 12, 120 times when they exited bankruptcy so that you only lose your account rather than you're in debt. Yeah, here's, here's the problem with that. One, uh, you're getting double the commission, right? and you increase the slippage, it's more difficult to manage defined risk trades because of the long leg. With the short legs, you can always just buy them back. With long legs, you have to find a counterparty to sell it to. So what I recommend is the following 15 ETFs that are liquid that, you can, that aren't gonna go to zero. Well, USO kind of proved us wrong with that, but they, they didn't go quite to zero. And, uh, uh, so I think that defined risk doesn't mean that you're going to, like, these aren't going to triple overnight. Brazil isn't going to disappear. 
but it could have a bad event that takes its market down pretty pretty low. But I think there's more money to be made by not buying those insurance legs and still managing your capital in a way where you can withstand the margin uh, tolerance. So I actually don't think people should be buying uh, spreads outside of the 10 delta, but I think they can trade naked across it. Good question though. Okay. But do you think if you have a really liquid stock and you can buy just whichever one is like, you know how when you look at like the stock, there's a ton that are one cent, but like the first one that's one cent? No. I think that's a decent idea? I think if you're a four digit account and you want to trade naked, you shouldn't be doing that on stock yet. Once you get to five figures, I agree that there's a bit more money to be made because let's say SPY has a 25% IV. Well, all the components of SPY will have a higher IV than the component. It's just the natural regression towards the mean that happens with offsetting positions. So you can make more money by taking on more risk by taking on higher volatility underlyings, but I don't think you could do that under 10,000 uh, and trade naked. I just think it's there's too much of a risk of going into debt, and I'd rather someone take their chance and go to zero then take their chance and owe money. Because for me, debt is actually a ideological concern. I think it, it's an actual a really bad thing. So I, in, I cannot give you advice that would put you there. I don't mind you taking on additional risk and possibly losing your account if you say I have the risk, personal risk tolerance to do that. But I wanted to create a system that is Le very unlikely to do that. It has risk, it has a black swan, but it's also reasonable. And I think you could eventually take this and scale it into a position where you're starting to trade 16 deltas and 30 deltas and actually make it beating SPY. Final question from Smitty. For small accounts, are Niners susceptible when the BPR is a bit greater than 5%? Yes. Uh, you're going to have to take on greater than BPR 5% uh, doing this. And that's why I recommend the liquid ETFs to do that. I don't think you should go uh, greater than 25%, but essentially it's all correlation driven. So having two positions of IWM and like the RUT uh, be 10% is not less risky than having a 20% SPY position. It's all about where the deltas lie and what the underlying correlation with is SPY is. So I think you're going to have to take a BPR greater than 5% to trade uh, Niners. And whatever that percentage is, that has to be part of your risk tolerance. This is not for new traders. If this is your first month, first three months, uh, trade defined risk, trade iron condors, trade spreads. Uh, we help you all the time with data only on that. Get in your first few hundred trades. Once you're willing to shed those long legs and get into pure short options and undefined risk, I think a new opportunity will you'll see of how you visualize markets and the derivatives and how they price them. Hey, how do I make it so I don't get sound whenever someone uh, goes in and out of voice? Where's that in the settings? Is it notifications? Yeah. Uh, if you go to settings, there should be something called streamer mode that turns oh. off all sounds and for stuff like that. Oh, okay. Streamer mode. Uh, enable streamer mode. There we go. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, can you talk again so I can make sure I could still hear you with that? Uh, yeah. Can you hear this? Yes, I can. Thank you for your help. Uh, as a boomer, it is much appreciated as this fucking Zoomer technology sometimes pisses me off. Streamer mode also hides any like codes on your screen, such as Discord links and stuff. Oh, good to know. Yeah, I had to, uh, man, I had to edit my registry to make it so that it didn't say my name right here on the uh, uh, on Excel. I don't know why that's a feature of like permanently putting your blasting your name on the screen. Okay, but anyway, we are back to January 1st. The market is not open, so we have to go to January 2nd. And I think we're going to start to take some profits. Of course, EEM is going to fuck us over because we can't close that position for who?
who knows what reason. The spiders are at 40%. IWM's at 35%. Gold is about to, it's not testing the call. It only has 15 days. I think it'll expire. Uh, Mexico is doing very good at that straddle. We have really recovered since that. We are only down now 200 bucks on it. And I think at one point it was 400. So the VIX is at 12. We do not open positions. Let's go to the third. And we might just accelerate two days at a time uh, to make this go a little bit faster. I know it's not the most exciting, like watching FDs uh, rise, but at least you have daily action and you're watching things. So it's good enough. Uh, okay, SPY is down 1.6. VIX is up 1 point, not enough to change that. The SPY is at 30% profitability. The IWM is at 40. Gold is now tested the break even. So we need to roll up the puts to a new strike. Create rolling. It's going to go at the Jan 17. And we need, what is the 30 delta? It is 144. So it's going to go up a whopping 11 points. We're going to get 50 cents per each of them, a buck o two total, confirm and send. Skip 10 minutes, see if we get a fill. If not, we'll roll it down to the natural because right now the mark and the price are the same, so we should get a fill. There we go. So we have now changed our GLD to a $1 strangle uh, because of uh, it being tested. So the delta, uh, the uh, sorry, the theta on that is going to vastly accelerate because there's only 14 days left, and we close these trades at five. So this is going to have some bigger swings. EWW is at 46. The, stra the straddle's at 45. EEM is at 45, and we are at uh, 40, 44.5. Uh, so we're still good on that. Uh, no profits to take. We are going to the weekend, January 6. And I think we're going to hope for the SPY to go down a little bit because our calls keep on getting tested. And it's up 0.3, so that's nothing. That's good. Uh, SPY is about to be 50% uh, profitable. So it took us, uh, let's see, we originally went in as a 50-day trade. It has taken 40 days, and we are finally hitting that 50% profitability. So we open this at 149, which means, uh, let's do 149 divided by 2. Is that going to be 75 cents? Let's, do, let's put that in as an order. Create closing order. You make, these G, uh, you make your closing uh, trades, GTC, because we don't care if it fires off today or tomorrow. And it's the mid right now, so it might not fill. And that one is good to go. IWM is not ready to be taken off. We have 30,000 in the market. That's exactly where we should be. Uh, and once we close this out, we are not entering a new position unless it is takes us to 75,000. So this has to free up at least 5,000. Let's fast forward five minutes, see if it fills. The mark's 75, the price is 75. I'm betting it's a good chance unless uh, suddenly there's a big shoot up in the price. We are closing for a 50% profit on our largest position. And it is buffering. It's not the fastest uh, system, but it's still pretty cool to be able to go back in time and test all this stuff. Even though sometimes IV doesn't really... So yeah, this is volume. Oh, look at this. It's starting to populate here. Let's take off MR. Boom. Looks like these are populating. That's good. Oh, perfect. Now we get historical IV. That's what we want. USO is where we need to be trading. 
yes, I know USO crashes, but we have to go by what we knew at the time. All right, so the Mar we did not fill. The mark has still been at 75. We'll just go to tomorrow and see if it fills uh, the morning. Now, when we skip ahead one day, it doesn't check every time period between that to fill. Uh, it filled at 60 cents. Oh, that's great. We made uh, we actually made 65% profit rather than 50% because of that. So that was a very favorable fill. Uh, IWM is at 43% profitability. We are about to take that off. We have 80,000, so we only have 20,000 in the market. We can now enter a new trade because even though the VIX is 14, taking off the spider uh, got us a lot of buying power back. So I'm going to take it to everybody here. What do you want to put on? Let's look at volatility. XOP, USO, QQQ, GDX would be one of the four that uh, the four highest volatility. Maybe XLE, those, any of those five. So who wants to uh, put in a uh, suggestion? Oh, good. In the lead still. Anybody? Just want to make sure that we're still on the stream. Uh, Disconscious, you here? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone else is. There we go. Now I'm hearing both of you. So uh, both of you were in. Why don't you each give me a suggestion? Uh, let's go for TLT. Good idea. I will, TLT, uh, TLT has a negative correlation with SPY. Uh, its volatility right now is, ooh, it's at a 12 IBR. Uh, that's, that's too low. We're not going to get enough premium for it. Right. Let, let's go with something right. else. One of the, how about give me one of these that have a, an IVR above 25? Uh, so, like, to be honest, your stream looks like negative 20. <laughs> so, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about this then? XOP, USO, QQQ, GDX, XLE. Uh, let's go with USO. It's a fun one. USO is fun, and it's going to be a wild ride. So, it's trading at 13. So,. Well, we're gonna we're effectively probably gonna have to straddle this to make it worthwhile. But let's take a look. All right. Because I have no problem straddling a thirteen dollar stock. Uh, that's weird. Why isn't it? Oh, it's buffering. Yeah, sorry, my internet died. Now I'm back. I'm not sure what I missed, but I'll just listen. <laughs> no, that's okay. I mean, well, it's buffering right now, so if you got a question, do it, because I'm just watching the screen. Yeah. Uh, well, I just hopped in, like, right before I started talking, basically, so I've missed everything that was happening. Sure. But it looks like this is your uh, back testing, right? Like, this yeah. It's pretty comprehensive where you're able to, like, switch dates and get filled at different prices or have, like, realistic... I, mean, I guess it is real data, right? This is it is stuff it's that's happened in the it's past. real data, but it's not every piece of data, so it can't guarantee that it would have played out this way because there was no fill, and some of this data is going to be approximated, but it is relatively realistic. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, no. Yeah, so it's not going to be a hundred percent, but I think it's relatively accurate enough for what we're doing. So. Uh, USO was suggested. Uh, that is trading at, what is it, 13? So we can sell the 20 delta and still get enough premium. We just can't do the 10 delta. It's just too small on this. So we're going to sell both of these. We're going to do it at the mid. And I think we want to do about three contracts to make it worthwhile. That's going to cost us 1000 bucks, but we're going to get 114 for it. And it hasn't filled yet. It's at 38. Let's see if it fills after five minutes. Or is it 10 minutes for the skip forward? Uh, the mark is still 38, but no fill. Do another 10. So you're staying for $1,000 in like, cost. You're going to 
get a hundred bucks, so ten percent on this trade. Uh, yeah. The so we're gonna get uh, thirty-eight times three on the twenty delta. So that's one hundred and fourteen. But remember, we're only gonna we're gonna take profits at fifty percent. So we're not going to get a hundred percent off of this. But we're getting a return on capital, sometimes as low as 14 days by doing that. So I'd rather get 50% profitable 14 days than wait 50 days and not maybe and maybe have the trade go to hell uh, in the last week. Let's go to why? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, the I mean, if you do, in fact, let's rerun this back test and not take 50% profits. So. See this? Oh yeah, let's see what happens. I'd be curious. Yeah, let's do that while hopefully this trade fills in the background. So here we are taking 50% profit, exiting at nine days to expire, and rolling the untested side at 30 delta. We have an 88% win rate and uh, $29 per contract average profit. Let's go to this, but we're going to, oh, we have to, let's see, 50 and 50. nine and we're going to delete the 50 percent profit and it's going to be 10 years so my guess is that it's going to get wrecked in around 2018 during the volatility of that i think it'll be fine from 20 uh, 2010 to 2017 i think 2018 is going to fuck it up Oh, look, the uh, strangle filled. So remember, we bid the mid when we enter trades, not when we exit, because we can afford to choose a different underlying. But when we exit, we need to get out. All right, here we go. And the win rate is now 83% versus 88. We were winning $73 when we take 50% profitability. It goes up to 86, but the losses, which were previously... 22 at 284 for 6200 wait oh it skipped it skipped corona i was like wait how the hell did it uh, manage to survive that part yeah that doesn't make that doesn't make sense yeah well, okay here we go oh no so not oh. taking the profits look look how good it did for the first eight years like i said the 2018 through 2020, it did better than I thought, in which it did about even. Notice with the 50% profits, we actually had a little more volatility. It's so it looks like those recovered a little bit because of the bull run, right? Yeah, and 70. This this is the other thing that hurts. Look at this: 79% probability of success. That's actually what it should be because if you add up the nine and the nine eighteen here, first, uh, so it should be uh, what. 72% profit? No, that's not right. 74%? No. 18. 78%, right? Yeah. Okay, so this should mathematically be 78% profitability. I can't. Am I right on this? Some. I've been sometimes too much math. Okay, 82. Yeah, why am I saying that? Okay, 82%. And it's 79. That's close enough. Because we had a black swan, it kind of fucked things up at the end. Look at this one. 88%. So you're going to get double the losers with this system. And yes, even though you take those bigger wins, 103 versus 73, you go from 22 losses to uh, 21, but the losses are far bigger. And the stand this is what scares me, the standard deviation. I tried to make this as low as possible so that you have this nice clean line and that it survives. With here, the standard deviation is almost three times and the dur duration, 37 days. Here, 21 days. So your positions have 16 more days and that gamma risk is what eats you up. So here's the danger of trying to be greedy. It works. And it works for a while and then it kills you. So yeah, that looks like it wiped out all their gains. <laughs> it did. Look at the ending result, negative 200. Yeah. But here's the dangerous part right here, negative 4,300. Yeah, so if you didn't have like the expiration or like time on your side. 
if you didn't have seven, they're hoping for it to get better. Right. Yeah. If you didn't have seventy six hundred in margin at the very end, here you only needed twenty five hundred in margin. If you got if if you put one hundred percent of your capital in, you get margin called here, and you are out forty three hundred bucks because Oof. they're going to unwind your positions. This is why the most important part of this trade is get out. Like get out and manage. Like if you leave these undefined, this trade is great during 2011 through 2018. Look how many winners it has. There's almost no losers. Right. In my system, you take those losses and you roll up the deltas. You take the losses, you roll up the deltas and you recover and if you you just don't take on more risk than you could take that's why look we have a hundred thousand dollar account and how long have we been playing with twenty thousand because we we just don't have the premium to justify the risks we want to bounce back like a v during corona <laughs> not have a uh right. an l all that's right crazy so let's see what happened uh, now that we filled that position. So the last position we feel filled was those USO 1214 strangle for 38 times three. And that's now going to live here. And TLT is off, so I'm gonna uh, close that. And SPY is off, so we're not gonna look at that anymore. So we have 80,000, we have 4,000 more that we could put in, but I don't like to put in more than one new position every day. You don't wanna just put in too many eggs at the right at the wrong time. Wait, this is from Donger. Wait, what was the modification? I just missed the last part. Oh yeah, uh, the thing that caused it was not taking 50% profits. That's what ruined the, and that's what caused the black swan to spiral out of control. Uh, the trades ended up staying 35 days in uh, in holding rather than 21 days. There was no rebound effect. The the gamma kept on accelerating. Uh, Donger, does that explain it for you? So we're going to be able to hopefully open a new position on the 8th of January. The VIX is flat. Oh, the VIX continues to go down. SPY is up, uh, but we closed that SPY position. Oh, here's another example. That SPY position, what was that? A 327 call? Well, guess what? SPY is now at 325. Good thing we closed it because that, del that delta is what? Uh, 40, 45, and the gamma's gotta be what? 80? Like the, the gamma's gotta be ridiculous at this point. So getting out of SPY at 50% caused us to have a winner and not take on additional risk. That's the key. It's not about like closing winners in the form of like taking profits prematurely. It's about lowering gamma risk. So if we're playing blackjack, taking winners doesn't really make sense. But we're actually doing something where there's an accelerationism to it. So taking winners prevents long tail exposure. All right, uh, IWM. Oh, look, IWM's profitable now, 50%. Time to close that one. We are taking a lot of profits lately. Look at that now. We have 101,000 in our cash sweep. We still have an unrealized loss, probably because of EEM and EWM. EWW, we'll f figure that out soon. So we're gonna close this position. Remember, we're going to take the price, so we're gonna close at the natural. We are willing to pay a penny to get out. There we go. And let's see where we're at. We now have 17,000 in the market when we're targeting 25,000. So we can put on a new position today. Uh, I would like it to be a bigger one. So of the following uh, positions, what would you guys want? QQQ, SPY, IWM, or uh, yeah, one of those. Cubes. Yeah, let's do the Qs. We haven't done them yet. Uh, and the Qs have some nice volatility. It looks like 34 IVR. So I like that position. We're going to trade the Qs. And 
we are going to go to fit we're doing 50 days to expiration so the february monthlies we don't have any i think we only have one february position so this is good of kind of stretching out our dates uh the 10 delta here is at worth 40 and the 10 delta on the put is probably going to be worth a bit more yep 80 that's the put skew we're going to get a dollar 19 for this and we're going to take the mid. We're not going to do the nap because we can afford to wait and open a different position. So confirm and send. This is going to eat up 5K in buying power, about 3,000 on Tasty if we're to do that. And that's routed. Oh, and it insta-filled at 119. So that's good. We're now down to 20. So we're using 23,000 in buying power. That means tomorrow we can probably open up one smaller position. So that's perfect. Uh, let's see if there's any... Uh, Oh, these are at nine days to exp expire. Let's see what the system says. Nine days to expire, you gotta roll out. So today's rollout day. Let's uh, do that. That's weird. It, it's not using up this part of the screen where start bar normally is. I moved it over to a different screen. I don't know why it didn't do that. Uh, time to roll, so it's rolling day. Uh, that means, let's see. This position's closed. GLD needs to roll. So GLD right now is a dollar in the money. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a loss. We're going to roll both of these out. To February. And the new strikes are going to be... 157 on the uh, call. That's going to give us a lot more breathing room. And what do we have on the put? Uh, the 10 on that's going to be 140. Oh yeah, so this is going to be 17 points wide, and it's going to cost us a buck 75 to do this roll because there's just not much value left in the old one. So we're taking a little bit of a loss, but. Uh, I think this will make this trade eventually into a winner because I think we originally did this for a buck ten. Okay, so we're gonna lock in a little bit of a loss, but that's just how it's gonna work. Actually, we need to do the mid. There we go. Okay, buck seventy six. So that one rolled. Uh, let's see what else. EM. I don't think we'll be able to close that. Let's see. Yeah. That one's just gonna expire and whatever the loss is. Luckily, it's at 45, so it's only gonna be a nominal like 50 buck loss or something. EWW needs to roll, it's at 46. It's collected some good premium from the straddle, so let's roll this out. It's gonna go to the Februarys. I wonder if I did it where uh, I would roll one of them on like 11 days, the next one 10, the next way 9. That way I'm not having three positions immediately change on the same day. That might be a good adjustment to the system. So let's look at February, and we want the 10 deltas. So we're going to do the 49 and the uh, 43. And that's going to cost us a buck eleven. We originally did this for a buck nineteen, so the dream's still alive. If these expire worthless, uh, it's still an overall profitable trade. Uh, move it a buck, a penny off the mid, and it filled. That's good. All right. And are there any positions now that are at nine days that I don't see? Yep, EEM, but I can't do anything about those. Okay, we're good to go. That was a big day. It took profits on a position, rolled two out. And the spy jumps a couple points. So good thing we closed that because we would have had $200 exposed on each of those straddles. So we would have lost 600 bucks if we didn't close that. So good on the system for telling us to get out. You can't don't have options expiring the week of and this is saying a little more than a week of, more like a week and a half. Uh, wonder why it says double diagonal. I guess because that's how it rolls. 
Okay. Uh, USO up 5%. QQQ down 6%. GLD up 5%. EWW up 13 Uh, And EM can't close that out. Let's just hide it for now. Whatever it is, it will be. So 20,000, 25,000. We need 5,000 in. Uh, in new position uh, that means we could do let's see we could do TLT we can do XLU we haven't done XLU and we could do XLE XLE has the highest uh, IV let's do that one not the highest IV the highest IVR there is a difference uh, it is pre buffering there we go let's open a new position on the this the night the 10 and the 10 and we're gonna have to do a couple of these to make sense uh, we need three to get a hundred bucks there we go perfect now we have an XLE position That puts us to Friday, Jan 10. And I think we'll go in another 10 minutes or so, and then we'll we'll call it a night and take some questions. Uh, on Jan 10th, the market is flat, which is good for us. That means we're up 5%, 5%. I wish the P&L day worked better, but it doesn't seem to. It seems to be off. Uh, TLT, does, is there a position on? No. I wish it only showed the existing positions, but... It seems to like the having the old ones. GLD is oh, GLD has become pretty profitable lately. Not enough to take off. Uh, the VIX is at twelve, so we don't enter positions because we are perfectly where we want to be at seventy-five thousand in cash. Oops, I went back to my real account again. Fuck that. There we go. Jan tenth. We're gonna skip to the thirteenth. And we might just skip a couple days next time because I none, none of these positions are close to being in the danger zone. Oh, maybe GLD. No, 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 we fixed that. So, yeah, none of them are. All right. Plus 40%. So gold, despite only selling gold, how long was it? Feb 21. No, no, that's the expiration. 1 8. Five days, and it's already up 40%. How great is that? That you have like a position that makes you money in like seven days. Uh, the rest, oh, the XLE is doing really good too. EM is, we're going to call that a 200, $400 loss probably as it expires worthless, but it would have been much less if we could actually manage it. So it's messing with our P and uh, we would be profitable if EEM closed properly. I'm going to skip to the 15th. Oh, good. Market's really flat. XLE is about to be taken off, even though it is only it is still 40 days, 37 from expiration. Uh, EWW about to be taken off. Actually, almost every position is ready to be rolled, even though we're only day 13 of the trade. That's exciting. So let's go to the 17th. And we have a bit of market surge. Do naked calls reduce buying power? Uh, they reduce buying power the same as the naked put, so you're getting double the premium for half the buying power reduction. Because, you know, it, it can't go both ways. Either the put's tested or the call's tested, so the buying power reduction is identical, almost identical. It actually uses a slightly different formula, but it's usually about 20% the underlying. On Tasty, on Thinkorswim, it looks like it's closer to 28, 30%. All right, so... XLE, 46% profitability. 
USO, 27%. Gold, 43%. EWW, negative 6%. And EEM is probably expired now. Yep. It expired $1.60, so we lost only 300 Okay, so that's not that bad. We're gonna, it's a three-day weekend. You get January 20th off, so January 21st. So we're gonna close some of these for profit and we'll end the stream right before Corona hits and that'll be the next stream. Okay, market's going up. That's gonna hurt our positions. Not gold though. Gold is perfect. Gold is profitable, 53%. So we're going to close that position. I don't think we're gonna roll it. So we're buying these st strangles back at 31 cents. We sold them for a buck 18. That's actually really good. That's not 50%. I don't know what, I don't know why that is saying it like this. Maybe it's because of how it rolled. That's probably why. It's counting the previous loss. So let's do it at the mid, 31, confirm and send. And skip 10 minutes, see if it fills. If not, I'll change it to GTC. Add it or cancel replace order. GTC, because it's a close, you can do that. Don't do that on open ever. All right, and it closed for an even better price. All right, so we only have 18,000 in the market. VIX is 12. We got to open up a new position. We got to get some more profits in here. So uh, who wants to open? Let's, I'll give you the choices between, uh, we need quite a bit of capital. So let's see. How about I, IWM or do we have GLDs? No, nope. IWM or GLD, uh, which ones would you guys want to do? And then we'll have one more week and we'll close this uh, uh, session. Anyone? Maybe it's time to end the trade. IWM, okay. We'll do one more IWM and we'll call it a night. So let's go IWM. And we want the March. So that's our first time selling March. Uh, we want the 10 Delta. That's gonna get us 37 on here and uh, 67 here. That's a buck 05. Uh, we'll just do a one lot on it. That should be 4,000 BP. That's about where we wanna be. Now, you know what, we can do two. No, no, that's how you get greedy. We'll do one. There we go. And skip forward, fill it. Let's see. There we go. Let's go the next day. Let's go to the 24th. We'll end the week. And we'll go back to market open. So that's 630 because we're getting close to that timer ending. QQQ is at 225. We sold 229. The call side is getting tested pretty hard, but it's not quite there yet. It's still at the 35 delta. So we haven't breached the break even. This one is getting really close to USO. So USO has tested the put now. So we're going to roll the call down. And then we'll call it a night, I think. So. It was a 1214. Notice how it's at 11.5. So you add up the uh, the 0.38 minus 12, and you see that the break even's been breached. So we roll the 14 call, and we're going to roll it to the 
30 delta, but because this is such a small vehicle, we might just have to make it the 50 delta, if that's the only strike that makes sense. Uh, keep February 21st, or 21st. The, it's the 14 call, and that's gonna go here. And where's the 30 delta? It's 12. So yeah, this is gonna create a strangle, uh, a straddle. But that's the only way it'll play out. And we're gonna get 16 cents for it, uh, times two. No, times three, so 50 cents. So we're getting about 50 bucks for it. Let's make it 45, we'll drop one below the mid. No buying power change on that. We'll see if it fills. If not, we'll make this GTC and we might change it. Mark is 17. Yeah, let's. We're going to have to pay a little bit more for this. There we go. Just a penny more. And let's end it. End this and see where we're at. So this EEM is incorrect. That's going to be minus 200 or so. Let's look at our positions and see how we did. Because remember, the, we're expecting to get a little bit beaten up right here. And, oh, it doesn't show the money that we made from these. Because SPY was a profit, but it shows zero. Now the cash and sweep is 10.6. I don't think it's a 600 profit though. This is incorrect. The so we're gonna remove half of it. We're gonna remove 400 of this. Uh, I mean, remove 200 of that. 500 loss is 600. So let's see. EW 9937. You know, let's go off in net liquidity. So we'll add 300 bucks to it. We're down 300 through. November through January, and let's take a look at SPY to see how that did uh, during there, because I have a feeling that was one of the more problematic times. So November, boom, through January, boom. Yep. Okay. So the market went straight up and we only lost a couple hundred dollars in a ten thousand dollar in a hundred thousand dollar account. So that's barely a percentage point. And when you're selling strangles like this, this type of movement is not what you want. You want more of this type of movement. And so we're I think we're we're gonna take profits from January to February, and then February is the black swan event. So that was a lot uh, to cover in a stream. I hope that was useful to see that you can, I mean, you notice we took a lot of winners at the beginning when it was more uh, here, but then it went up and we had to manage some losers, but none of them got away. We were trading naked and not a single position was more than a loss of like, what, 200, 100? So imagine what's gonna happen when the VIX, which is at 11 right now, goes to 80 here and we're collecting eight times the premium so that's why we didn't get greedy and that's why we constantly watched where was it on thinkorswim right here this vix we didn't we didn't use more than 25 percent of our buying power because we weren't going to make that much money we have to scale in because once you go let's let's take a look at what what the vix has in store for us on march 10th It's gonna take a sec, but look how this number from 12 is now 50. And remember that SPY trade that we did where we collected a buck 50? Let's take a look at SPY and the type of premium we're gonna get on selling when the recovery starts to kick in. That's gonna be the April, and we're gonna do the 10 delta. First of all, look how far out the 10 delta is. It's gonna be ridiculous. We're gonna hit 262 just for the put side. Let's see what the call side looks like. A buck 38, we're gonna be collecting four times more. And the VIX is four times more. 
So the premiums are about to get pretty ridiculous. And if you look at today, we're about half that. We're about VIX 24. So there's a lot more excitement, a lot of easier profits. Uh, but that's why buying, that's why I tell people don't put all your eggs into one basket. Like the debit spread guy in the beginning, he just said he put too much in and he didn't have time to adjust. So we played small. We didn't make much money. In fact, we probably lost a hundred bucks, but we set ourselves up for success because I could have taken you through 2012 through 2015 where we didn't book a single loss. Each of the, these two losses, we bounced back immediately off of the roll. That's, that's boring. And, and I, it's going to be fun when that happens, but you have to learn how to handle this rather than how to win 99% of the time when this just goes smoothly. So any final questions before we end the stream? All right, well, we'll end it here. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for, well, probably was, what, three hours of going through this, of watching me make trades and uh, learning the system. Again, in pound links, I go over the details of it, of nine delta strangle, 50 days to expire, expire roll at 50% profit, roll at nine days to expire. And if the break even is breached, uh, roll up the untested side to the 30 delta, same expiration. And stick to li liquidity ETFs, ones that only have a couple pennies in between the bid and the ask. Because you saw how quickly we were getting filled on those. We weren't slipping because of that. And that's what drags down the performance when you're only trading dollar wide on uh, these positions on, on the uh, smaller contracts. Anyway, thanks everybody.